So let's move from theoretical consideration to what it, what it is you're actually going to see in the lab. Uh, if we have photons interaction with nuclei, and if some magic way we could limit it entirely to photoelectric interactions, then we would have the same energy coming from our scintillator at all times. Alas, in real life, the photons from the material sample will be absorbed, some of them, so you will not get the full energy back out. You don't always have photoelectric events. Sometimes you have Compton events, and they introduce noise into the signal. So we have graph C, and that's coming close to reality, to what you'll see in the lab. Let's look at a, a actual gamma spectral and look at the spectral features one by one. This is the full energy photo peak, and there are several ways we can get this. One way is that we can have a simple photoelectric interaction and capture all the kinetic energy from the photoelectron. Another way is that we could have a Compton scatter and the photon coming from the Compton scatter is captured by a photoelectric event in the detector. All this happens so quickly that the energy shows up in the photo peak. For single Compton events, we see the Compton background and continuum. Uh, we didn't derive the equations, but there's a maximum energy that can be given to the Compton electrons, and that's represented by C here, and it's called the Compton edge. We theoretically expect zero counts in region D uh, because Compton can't get that much energy into the detector, photoelectric can't and pair production can't get it there either. So what produces this much energy in the detector is a gamma that undergoes at least two Compton scatters and then the last scattered photon escapes from the detector. Here is a backscatter peak, which we'll talk about in a minute. F is, way over there, is the uh, energy from higher energy gamma rays from background and G, over this way, is the electronic noise. We are amplifying things enough that the noise inherent in the electronics shows up at the low end of the spectrum. It also turns out that the size of the detector influences what we see as a signal coming from the detector. If we have a small detector, the photoelectric reactions will produce electrons and almost always we will collect all of the electron energy because the range of electrons in solid is on the order of a few millimeters. For Compton interactions it's a different story. We can presume here that almost all of the Compton scattered photons escape so we gather no useful information from Compton interactions. For pair production, again, since we're assuming a small detector, we assume that the 511 gammas escape, and so that we end up with a double escape peak for those photons interacting in the detector that have more than 1.022 MeV. This double escape peak is set down from the gamma energy by 1.022 MeV. If we have a large detector, what a different story it is. Now, we win at everything. As before, photoelectric events are captured. After an initial Compton interaction, the scattered photon undergoes multiple Compton scatters until the last scattered photon is in low enough energy, they're finally soaked up by a photoelectric reaction. All of this happens so fast that this signal appears as a full energy peak. Pair production, it's the same game. A gamma has a pair production event, and the 511 keV photons are both captured within the detector, and so everything shows up as a full energy peak. How come we don't make all of our detectors large? Because it's hideously expensive, that's why and there's some serious engineering and resolution problems as the detector gets large. 
In the real world, we live with neither the small size detector model nor the large size detector model, but somewhere in between. Almost always, we capture the photoelectric events. We lose some of the scattered Compton gamma, but not all of them. In pair production, we sometimes lose one of the 511s. Sometimes we lose both. Sometimes we capture them both. This graph shows the resulting spectrum that is similar to what you'll see in the lab. 